Hello, this video is regarding projectiles and exercise 3b and we'll also cover target practice which is exercise 3c. The worked example 3.4 says that a particle is fired with an initial speed of u and if it is fired at an angle alpha to the horizontal from a point on the horizontal plane show that these three things the greatest height. The reason I chose this worked example is because there's algebra in it which is a slight change from what we've done so far. So it, it heads off at an angle alpha to the horizontal so um, and at an initial speed of u. So in the x direction uh, or the i direction, the, the uh, initial velocity is equal to u cosine alpha and in the y direction, u sine alpha. So u of x is equal to u cosine of alpha and v of x will always be the same as that. And s of x is equal to ut cosine of alpha from this formula here. u of y is equal to u sine of alpha. v of y is equal to u sine of alpha minus gt, again based on this formula here, and s of y is equal to uh, ut plus a half at squared, so there's u, there's t, is ut sine alpha minus gt squared over 2. Now, we want to show that the greatest height we'll reach is u squared sine squared alpha over 2g. The greatest height occurs when vy is equal to 0, when the velocity in the y direction is equal to 0, but that is max height. Our strategy is get the time when that happens and then substitute that time into s of y. So vy has to be equal to zero. So u sine alpha minus gt equals zero. So u sine alpha minus gt equals zero. Rearrange to get t is equal to u sine alpha divided by gravity. Substitute that into s of y. So we're going to have ut sine alpha minus gt squared over two, which is s of y. And we substitute our t, our new value for t in, we're going to get this. Okay, so t squared is equal to u squared sine squared alpha over g squared. Simplify it, we're going to get u squared sine squared alpha over g, u squared sine, minus uh, g u squared sine squared over 2 by g squared. So the g on the top is cancelled by g on the bottom, the u squared sine squared. We simplify that then, we're going to get, this is like a, um, a u squared sine squared alpha divided by g minus u squared sine squared alpha over 2g. So that's like a half of it. So the answer is u squared sine squared alpha over 2g. And that's our max height, which is what they've asked us to show. Done. Now we want to show that the range is equal to u squared sine 2a over g. The range happens when s of y is equal to 0. So similarly, let's get s of y. s of y is equal to ut, that's our formula. Rearrange that to let it equal to 0. Factor out a t, so we're going to get t into u sine alpha minus g t over 2, because here's the other t. So if they both equal 0, either this equals 0, t is equal to 0 by itself, or u sine alpha minus g t over 2 is equal to 0, which means that g t over 2 is equal to u sine alpha, and that means that t is equal to 2u sine alpha over g. So that's our time when the range occurs. And let's substitute that into s of x. s of x is equal to u cosine alpha t, or ut cosine alpha. Substitute our time in for that, and we're going to get this here. 2u squared sine alpha cosine alpha divided by g. Now, at this point, there's a new formula you need to be aware of. Um, in page 14 of the tables, the formula in tables book, we have the double angle formula sine 2 alpha is equal to 2 cosine alpha sine alpha. We haven't used them so far in trigonometry, and we probably haven't, we certainly wouldn't have done them in junior cert, so it may be the first time you've come across it. So it's on page 14, you'll become familiar with that page over time, and the double angle formula. So we can then replace our 2 cosine alpha sine alpha with uh, sine 2 alpha. So we have our u squared sine 2 alpha over g. And again, that's what they ask us to work out. Good. And the range will be a maximum when alpha is equal to 45 degrees. All right. Now, this, this is our range. It'll be maximized. If you look at this, obviously gravity is not going to change. It it's, uh, can't change at all. Um, to maximize this distance, you have to change the numerator, make it as positive as possible. Sine of any angle will range between minus 1 and plus 1. So to maximize it, we want this to be plus 1. We want sine 2 alpha to be equal to 1. 
So therefore, two alphas has to be equal to 90 degrees because sine of 90 is equal to 1. So alpha is equal to 45 degrees, which is what they asked you to do. There's another, there's a slight ambiguity here, um, to be honest, because, um, excuse me, my pen's not working. There's a slight ambiguity because if u is increased, that will also increase the range. You know, um, you can your maximum range will be increased by increasing your value for u, even with a smaller angle. If u is a much higher value, your um, your range will be much bigger. Okay. Next, move on to target practice. Two formula you need to know: sine alpha over cosine alpha is equal to tan alpha. You probably have that from junior cert. You do, and then one over cosine. One over cosine is equal to secant. And um, we don't normally use that phrase um, so far in our uh, mathematics, but one over cosine is equal to secant. So one over cosine squared is equal to secant squared. It can also be expressed as one plus tan squared a. A very quick little proof of that, um, of this line here. We're going to have sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. It's a famous identity. Divide everything by cosine squared. You're going to get cosine squared here, divide by cosine squared here, divide by cosine squared here. Sine squared over cosine squared is equal to tan squared plus one is equal to one over cosine squared, which is equal to secant squared. So that's where that comes from. Okay. Worked example 3.5. A particle is projected from a point O on the horizontal ground at an angle A to the horizontal. The initial speed is root 6g meters per second. It hits a small target whose position vector relative to O is 3i plus 11 over 12j meters. Find two values for A to the nearest degree. So a target practice, it's, it's, it is like a target practice. It's like a you're hitting something. So if you're projecting a missile from here or an arrow, wherever it might be, or a cannonball, and you send it off, you want it to hit the target. So how do you do that? So I draw my little diagram. I've got my angle A. I've got my x direction is root 6g cosine A. And in the y direction is root 6g. That should be over that. Sine of A. And um, my initial magnitude is root 6g. Again, that should be under, the, under that uh, third as well. And my two formulae that I'm going to need. V is equal to u plus at. S is equal to ut plus half at squared. I do my u of x, my s of x, my vy, my u of y, my v of y, and my s of y. This here is your s of x, and this is s of x. So we want root 6g t cosine a is equal to 3 of i. So we get our time in terms of that. So the time when, the, when our missile has gone this far in the x direction is equal to t divided by 3 3, should I say, divided by root 6g cosine a by rearranging this. We then substitute this time into s of y, which is 11 over 12. So s of y is equal to root 6g t sine a minus g t squared over 2. And we substitute this time in to this. So here's my root 6g. There's my time, which is 3 over root 6g cosine a. And that's multiplied by sine of a. And I've just got to subtract g t squared over 2. So g over 2 and t squared is equal to 9 over 6g cosine squared a. Here we are. So now I'm just simplifying all of that. I have 11 over 12. The root 6g's cancel out. I'm left with 3 divided by cosine a multiplied by sine a. And that, of course, is going to turn into tan a in a moment. And we have g over 2 multiplied by 9 over 6g. Cancel out the g's and we're left with 9 over 12 cosine squared a. Sine over cosine is tan and 9 over 12, 1 over cosine squared is 1 plus tan squared. So um, cleaning that, that a little bit, multiply the 9 by 12 by 1 and the 9 over 12 by tan squared, get this. Multiply everything by 12 to get rid of the uh, fractions and we get this. So I'm left with 11 is equal to 36 minus 9 minus that. I'm going to turn it into a quadratic. This is a quadratic form. I bring my 9 minus 9 tan squared a over to the left over to the left hand side. I get 9 tan squared a. Minus 36 tan a, it has to go across as well. Minus 36 tan a. And I have a plus 11, a 9 plus 9 gives me plus 20 is equal to 0. This is in quadratic form. So it's very like having 9x squared minus 36x plus 20 equals 0. I can get x equals maybe by factorising it, if I'm good at that, or I can use the quadratic formula. 
I'm choosing to use the quadratic formula. And as I said, it is like a, a quadratic form, um, but instead of having x squared, I've got tan squared. So I can say that tan is equal to, tan of a is equal to minus b coefficient, which is 36, plus or minus the square root of 36 squared minus 4 by a by c, all divided by two a's. So tan a is equal to 10 over 3, or tan a is equal to 2 over 3. So tan a is equal to 73 degrees, or sorry, a is equal to 73 degrees, or a is equal to 34 degrees. I'm not sure if you've seen that before, but it's a nice way to do it. If, if that was a bit confusing to you, you could say let x equal to tan a. And then you would get 9x squared minus 36x plus 20 equals 0. You're going to get x is equal to 10 over 3, or you're going to get x is equal to 2 over 3. And But then you're going to say, well, x is equal to tan a, so you're going to go tan a is equal to 10 over 3. OK, just before I finish, I think you're now equipped to deal with some of the uh, blue high level questions in exercise 3b and also some of the initial questions, which are all high level in exercise 3c. OK, I hope that helped.